This video is sponsored by RenderHub. Stick around to see where you can get high quality 3D models and also join the second edition of the RenderHub Fashion Contest. So, Unreal Engine 5.6 is around the corner and here are a few updates which are more of sneak peeks to the full release of the engine. And as we all know, the folks at Epic Games usually release a fresh copy of Unreal Engine during the state of Unreal, which is part of the Unreal Fest. And this should be happening this year sometime in the month of June. And if we go by the trend of yearly releases, then Unreal Engine 5.6 is later to be announced during this time. And so, a few days back, the folks at Epic Games teased a set of Unreal Engine templates and there is a new UI coming to Unreal Engine and some interesting stuff as well. As you can see, that this is what the new UI of Unreal Engine will be looking like compared to what we originally have, and of course compared to what we had previously. And this is going to be like a second adjustment to the overall UI after Unreal Engine 4.27. As 5.0 came with some impressive looking UI and an overhaul seems to be happening with 5.6 as well. As we bought the teases and a simple walkthrough of the Git compiled version of Unreal Engine 5.6 by Inu Games, it is quite interesting to see what the UI of Unreal Engine 5.6 look like. A couple of things have been moved around. Like it or hate it, this now looks a little bit more modern compared to what we previously had, as Unreal Engine seems to be following the standard of most tools, giving us options to having these gizmos closer to where you get the menus, compared to having them on the right hand side of the screen. So instead of traveling from here, and doing all of this stuff, you can now do them right over to this part. Some things have actually moved from the right hand side to the left hand side and vice versa. So things like the camera speed has remained where they are, Why buttons like the perspective button where you can switch from various views has been moved to the right hand of the screen. And within the perspective menu, you would now notice that we've got some more menus down there. Things like the field of view now exists there, exposure exists right there. You've also got your typical viewport type, which is also there. And right now, bookmarks now exist within that section. So you can create a camera, set up your bookmarks, and there's also a couple of interesting options. One other cool feature that is now here within the perspective is high resolution screenshot, and this is gonna be super useful in the long run. The same thing can also be said for delete and also show. And show has now been replaced with a tiny button, which you can now click on the drop down to find stuff there. I do like the idea that there's a tiny bar. Instead of having these things just simply hovering, the tiny bar looks really cool and all of the snapping features are now towards one side. So the way this has been put together, all of the things that you need for manipulation is on one side and every other thing that you need for, you know, views, rendering and all of that stuff and, you know, deal with the camera, they are all put on the other side. So if you want to go from select, move, rotate, scale, and also pivot alongside the nicely new designed icons for all of the snappings, these are now on one side of the screen. Something else which you'd also notice, there seems to be something that already exists but isn't, is the viewport related transform tool button. As this offers access to the transform tool settings, coordinate system, gizmo, and also selection. So you can now make all of those adjustments by simply talking this through and seeing all of that. Other than that, there's just a tiny update to the tooltip and it seems like the folks at Epic Games are prioritizing icon-based menus in terms of the tools that you find on the toolbar and this is visible with the settings and also the show menu. And in terms of modeling, there's a little bit of an update especially with the UI. So if we simply have this object selected and we go over to modeling by default how you get to work with this is pretty easy we've already covered a couple of videos about how you can get started with this but if you're thinking about modeling this you might want to go over to the polygroup edit and from here you can go in select one specific part and you can insert that say for example we like to do a simple insert and then we might want to do a simple extrude you know this is very classic so we can go ahead and do something like that. If we're thinking about doing some beveling and all that, we can also go ahead and do that. You also notice that in terms of selection, these are selected right here. So we can either select simple points, which are definitely vertices, or we can go ahead and select the edges, or maybe we can select the face. Now with the unreleased version of Unreal Engine 5.6, things look a little bit different. As if you simply get started with making a model, you can either switch from object mode mesh vertices, mesh edges, or mesh triangles. This is a bit more put together compared to what we have before. So it's a little bit of an overhaul that the folks at Epic Games are doing. You'd also notice that right here, we've got the vertices, edge, and also triangles, which in turn is mostly like the polygons that you'll be selecting. 
there's also the polygroup, different ways you can select polygroup, which is amazing. So instead of sticking to the old ways of selecting, you can easily select these things from here and start modeling. And if you're thinking about editing your polygroups, you can simply select the polygroup of choice and you can start editing them. And one thing which you would also notice right off a simple selection is the gizmos look pretty different. So this gizmo looks a bit more nicer than what we currently have. And of course, if you see them side by side, there's a greater appreciation to the new gizmo compared to the present one. And with this, you can tell that the folks at Epic Games have done a bit of layout organization with the UI. And I'm kind of happy with what this currently looks like as it looks a bit more standard and potentially would be easier to navigate for those trying to get started with Unreal engine and of course a huge shout out to Inu Games for making this one possible and speaking about things that are possible in Unreal Engine by default once you start up Unreal Engine you do have a set of templates and this cuts across games film and video architecture automotive and also simulation and for games we have the first person third person top down handheld AR virtual reality and vehicle and this has now gotten an upgrade as the folks at Epic Games have now released nine interesting templates which seems to be coming with version 5.6 and something that they're introducing with this upgrade are called variants so the idea behind variants is this that once you pick up a template you can choose to pick a variant to work with this tool or not so the variant will act more like a tutor when trying to create your games so for example you can start off with a first person shooter game and you can choose to add a variant to give you all of the stuff that you need to create that first person shooter game and this is super optional so you can choose to either pick a variant or not and this is to appeal to everyone because you know by default sometimes you just want to get started with the bare bone template and just start building stuff without all of those bells and whistles while in some other cases you might want to get started with the template and use it as the basis of creating your stuff and that is where the idea of the variant comes in and for the templates, the folks at Epic Games have announced nine different templates, and this is across five different types of gameplay. And this includes a vehicle template, and the vehicle template comes with an off-road vehicle and course, time-lapse measurement, tracks with physical objects that also work with physics. And one of the cool ideas with this particular one is for you to learn how to build your own off-road vehicle games while also learning how to paint terrain, use the RVT, and also how to make use of the road tool. There's also the side scroller, which is 2.5D. And this comes to the side view dedicated camera setting. And some of the interesting features with this one includes the double jump, the bouncing pad, walkable floors, wall jumps, NPCs, which deals with state trees, and a lot more. And this also ships with blueprints and annotation explanation for various use cases. There's also the top down that deals with two forms of variants. So first off, we've got the one that is more of a strategy RPG. And this comes with some interactions such as drag select, unit movement, and also doors. And the kind of camera that you get to work with this one is more of an orthographic camera. And there's also the navigation mesh, which is also implemented. Now, outside the strategic variant, there's also the action variant. And this is more of a top-down arena game that simply features some kind of slow motion effect and also a combo system. And this also comes with some interesting features, which also deals with enemy AI. So depending on the kind of top-down creation that you're trying to make, you can now go ahead and get started with it. And we've got the first person shooter. So very typical, this has a basic, a shooter variant, and also a horror variant. So with the basic one, this by default offers a minimal composition of a first person character walking with a visible body. And this is going to be super useful, especially if you're trying to create that first person experience, especially for those who might want to simply tour a scene or something like that, that can come in very handy. And we've also got the shooter variant, and this adds a first person shooter gameplay feature, which includes weapon acquisition, shooting, damage, handling, you know, jumping pads, doors, respawning, and so on. And finally, there's also the horror variant that comes with the first person shooter. And this is specifically for those who are trying to create a bit of a horror themed game. And this sample just simply teaches you how you can deal with both the lighting, atmospherics, and the overall creation of a horror first person shooter game. And finally, we've got the third person. And so for the third person one, what we have here is more of a platforming template and a combat template. And the platforming template deals with an improved character movement behavior. There's also the inclusion of a jump adjustment, air control, jump hold, double jump, you know, wall jump, and also dash. 
And then we've also got the combat template, which implements multiple combat usages. So you can mix some combos to get some montages of attacks. And you can also do some charge attack. And this also features a state tree that deals with an enemy AI. And there's also the damage processing. So for what it's worth, the templates are all coming with variants and also various types of templates across different types of gameplay. So the main features which will be coming with these includes the variant system like we mentioned earlier, utilizing state three AIs. And there's also conversations about reducing the resolution of the templates that will be shipped to make it more lightweight and optimized. This is going to be a great educational learning process for those who are trying to get started with Unreal Engine. And speaking about Unreal Engine 5.6, InnoGames has also published something that is pretty interesting. So when he did check out the whole GitHub thing, there is a skeletal mesh builder.cpp that is there. And it kind of looks like nanite assemblies are possibly going to be coming to skeletal meshes in Unreal Engine 5.6 or possibly later. But you know, we have this in here and it kind of looks pretty interesting. So for those who might want to see a bit more of you know feature releases and stuff coming to unreal engine they might want to consider taking a look at these ones so we've got a couple of nice things that are yet to make their way to unreal engine 5.6 and this includes you know the nanite dynamic displacement this might be coming there's already a lot of things that the folks at epic mentioned that might be coming to unreal engine 5.6 and these are sort of seen as future features that might be shipping with the engine so during the unreal fest at seattle 2024 these were mentioned and some of them include the nanite skeletal mesh that we just mentioned nanite foliage nanite decals and also translucent support for lighting there's more research to be done for mega lights there's also r d in high frame rate per second using lumen and there's also some updates to rendering that might be coming and in terms of architecture some stuff that deals with render parallelization vulcan performances enhanced barriers enhanced shader permutation material editor and so on might also be shipping with this there's also some future plans to bring some cool stuff to the world building pcg control rig for animation altering which might be coming with some nice characterization and retargeting profiles that i think a lot of creators would love to see especially for those doing animation and there's also some updates that might be coming to both the animation authoring engine, anim engine itself, and of course, we might be getting some updates to motions overall. So all of these might be coming to Unreal Engine pretty soon. Control rig physics might also be coming in terms of animation, native USD support, Material X, and a truckload of other impressive features. I would love to see what the live capture workflow looks like. And speaking about the live capture workflow, we're kind of working on a video to show you guys how you can work with Rococo and get live capture performance right inside of a real engine. And you know, there are tons of features that are currently speculated to make their way to Unreal Engine 5.6. Something else which might also be making its way to Unreal Engine 5.6 is a more optimized Apple Vision integration with Unreal Engine 5.6. As Spatial Beaks has actually done a couple of tests previously, looks like there is a great performance with how tight hand tracking performs straight out of the VR template that exists exist with Unreal Engine. So it looks like Apple Vision OS might be getting a huge update with this one and things are just looking pretty cool. Something else that you might want to consider checking out are the folks at Render Hub. So if you're looking for where you can get super inspired in terms of creating cool, amazing stuff, then Render Hub is the perfect place for you as they offer a ton of interesting looking art pieces that can inspire your next creation. And if you're looking for free 3D models, you will definitely find a ton of them right here on Render Hub. And for those thinking about a marketplace where they can get both 3D models, textures, 2D game assets, materials, animations, 3D scans, and so much more, then you might want to consider taking a look at the Render Hub Marketplace. More so, the folks at Render Hub are currently doing a Render Hub Fashion Contest. And this is the Render Hub Fashion Contest version 2, which is running from May the 1st all the way to June 30th, 2025. And this has a price value of $7,200, with terms and conditions applied. So whether you're thinking about getting started with learning cool stuff, buying, selling, or getting free 3D models, or possibly you just want to join a contest, then Render Hub is the home for you. So this is it. A huge shout out to the folks at Render Hub, alongside the folks at Epic for making this possible. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.